Welcome to Life Force Rejuvenation. My name is John. I have the esteemed pleasure of interviewing Mr. Five Drexler, recording artist, rap superstar. Yeah, it will happen. <laughs> yeah, I love the one term that's like, you know, it's in the archives and it'll, was it a, a treasure that will be discovered later on? And it's already been discovered. Oh, my God. Pretty much listen to everything you got there, at least on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I'm that way. So with that, <laughs> thank you, Five Drexel, for joining me. Let's, you. let's dive into your recording history. All right. Um, I think I around the first time I recorded, recorded would probably be around... 14 years old um i acquired cheap microphone and and preamp and learned how to set it up through the computer and everything and had some type of cheap i forget what it was called some cheap software first and uh you know just eventually over the years upgraded upgraded the technology and software and got it popping um probably around 15 16 uh, i started doing like the local talent shows at high school and um i had a local uh a local group that was you know in their 20s so they, had, they were already doing shows and were more established they kind of like took me and my friend under their wing and would let us open up for them and just get like a little, little bit of exposure and get some uh, experience and everything and kind of just taught us some of the uh you know like management stuff and and recording stuff and touring stuff that type of thing um and i say probably like around um 18 or 19 like once i got out of school i kind of like fell back from it just you know got in you know got into you know adult stuff you know working and a little bit of a social life and just wasn't as much time or didn't make as much time for music as i should have um then when I was in 20, when I was 21, I had, uh, I was in a fatal car accident and um, two of my friends died from it. And that just kind of was a turning point. And I got like super sober and got religious for a while and just fucking just did a complete 180. You know what I mean? And over the years, I've kind of found that it, it should be more of a balance. You know what I mean? That you know, too much of anything can be a bad thing, even if it's a good thing. Um, I'd say around um, five or six years ago, um, probably about seven years ago, uh, the music stuff started to pick up some. We started, uh, we got like the Spring Breakers movie. Uh, we picked up some tours uh, with some established artists. Um, and then just the last few years now, I've just, kind of want to kind of wanted to go a new direction um i guess i wouldn't say i'm enlightened but upon um receiving more knowledge i've kind of i've kind of seen what the music industry is and um there's just certain parts that i i wouldn't or couldn't participate in um but i still love making music so i just decided to go like a totally different route and um just to start doing something uh occult and um, wisdom based and um something that can help people um uh, but i also wanted it to be fun and entertaining at the same time so i've just been trying to walk that line of something you know what i mean that i can teach you but also uh, reach you with at the same you know at the same time so um from there um yeah, we're here. So I got the new Tarot Project. Uh, it'll be coming out in a few months. Um, in the meantime, I'm just working on that. I'm working on myself. Um, and then, uh, you know, just figuring out the plan for uh, the next project. Cool, Dan. Now, you, you, you talked about the Tarot Project. Are you just doing the major uh, arcana, the majors? Yeah, um, at this point, uh, it's titled Major Arcana. 
and it's one through 21 songs <laughs> and number one's the magician and so forth and so on and ending with the world uh i'm really happy with it um it was an interesting process uh making it i read like probably seven or eight tarot books and and actually uh did several different um act, well, now it's activities but procedures and and things with the tarot to kind of get myself more familiar and the symbolism and the archetypes that are in it are uh, are very fascinating and i um i really didn't know what i was in store for when i when i embarked uh down the path like a little over a year ago with the with the tarot and but i'm glad i did that sounds totally amazing and i could totally resonate it nope nobody's done that <laughs> yeah i thought that would be an interesting approach too like i was trying to figure out well, you know I've, I've made lots of you know music singles and a few albums and and different projects of of, of you could kind of consider different genres but i figured um you know how can i go deeper with with the content so here we are that's some deep stuff. So do, do you do uh, tarot readings for individuals? No, I don't. Um, I might be something I'd, I'd be into in the future. Um, I've been learning more. I've been leaning more on the the symbology with it and everything. You know what I mean? Um, with the design, uh, with the subconscious influence over... Um, uh, what's the word? Not... Uh, damn, I can't think of the word. Uh, when you try to predict the future with with the cards, divination, yeah. Hmm. Nice. Um, now, when when you uh, you said that you uh, you've read multiple books on the tarot for your project, did you use any one specific design, or did you incorporate off the designs from the book? Um. I originally started with the uh, Rider weight. Um, I didn't really feel a, a big connection with that, and then I, I, uh, I got the um, the Boda deck upon recommendation, and um, I really like that deck a lot. I got the uh, Crowley Thoth deck also, um, and I worked with it a little bit, but I prefer the Boda deck. Uh, I think you know each of them have different parts that. Are, that are strengths and weaknesses, especially like when I've um, learned a little bit more about their histories and everything. Uh, but they they all have interesting parts. Um, I do like the thought deck, and it's kind of like it reminds me of like a psychedelic like DMT realm, like the the artwork. Whereas I feel like the Boda and the Rider Waite are more um, traditional uh, symbols. Cool, man. You know, one, one question, you know, that, so you talk about the Boda and the writer. Are the symbolisms in the card the same or they're off on their own? They're, they're pretty similar. I would say they're probably like, uh, like 80 to 90 percent the same. Um, they might have the cards, like the, the card might be like 90 percent the same and there might be like a little bit of differences. Um, I think the Boda and Rider Way only have like one or two actual card changes, whereas like the Thoth deck has an art card instead of temperance, and uh, one of the other cards is switched out too. So the Boda and Rider Waite are pretty are pretty similar though. Cool. Yeah, I've been a Rider Waite, Rider Waite, just because there's more literature on it and stuff like that. But right, to each his own resonance. That's it. Yeah. Yes, sir. All right, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> David Rollins, thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel. It's thank totally, you for having me. It's totally an honor and a privilege to share space with you. Yes, sir. So we always have a good time. All right, you're an amazing individual. Maybe in a, maybe in our next video, you can uh, bust out one of your uh, tarots. Yeah, we could do, do that. Maybe I'll mm -hmm. give you a I'll spit you a little piece of one of the tarot cards, you know, in acapella form, so we don't get copyrighted on YouTube. I don't need you collecting my royalties for my music. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs>
Um, with that, thank you for joining us on YouTube. Yes, sir. Peace, love. Namaste. And blessings. so cool no you have amazing, you have amazing energy <laughs> thank you brother you know, your room man your room is fucking lit <laughs> i love the tapestries yeah these things are just total inspiration and you know thumbing through ebay so oh that's gonna